Hello, everyone. I am, my name is Ivy. I am your TA for some of you. Um, I will be talking about ketamine assisted psychotherapy today. Um, I know I'm not sure if you guys had the chance to uh, look at my colleague and friend's um, presentation on CAP as well, but this is going to be more focused around the reading that we, readings that we have assigned. So I'm going to go ahead and start. So uh, ketamine is a member of a class of compounds called R, R sorry, I'm going to try to say this word, R, Ari, Errol, Errol, Cycle, Hexalimins, I'm sorry, <laughs> developed by Parker Davis Pharmaceutical Company as an anesthetic agent. The first compound in this class was a pensa pencyclidine, or also known as PCP, I first synthesized in 1926 and then patented in 1953 and used as an anesthetic agent for humans, animals, and until the mid-60s when it was abandoned for human use due to its extended post-operative psych psychotic-like effects called um, the emergence delirium. Ketamine with a chemical structure very similar to PCP was first synthesized in 1962 by Calvin Stevens at Park Davis in search for a safer, more predictable anesthetic medication. The unique pharmacological effects of PCP and ketamine, including stimulation at lower doses and sedation at higher doses, lack of pulmonary or cardiac suppression, seeming in difference to pain and dreamlike imagery led this class of chemicals to be labeled as disassoci disassociative anesthetics. So unlike most other psychedelics, the aryl cyclohexamines or their analogs have not yet been discovered in the human body or any well, anywhere else in nature. Um, it was also uh, approved by the U.S. Food Drug Administration for anesthesia and its use for painful surgical procedures. Um, and then Mexican psychiatrist Salvador Roquette introduced ketamine psychedelic effects at the Maryland Psychiat Psychiatric Research Institute um, or psychedelic for psychedelic psychotherapy. Um, and then next one. So I want to talk about the chemistry and pharmacology of ketamine. So ketamine has several properties that contribute to its safe use in an appropriate setting. Its onset is rapid and short elimination half-life, meaning that it's easier to titrate and recovery time is less than other anesthetics, no injection site irritation, and it is soluble in water. Ketamine has many potential routes of administration, while the majority of clinical trials have utilized intravenous dosing, ketamine is well tolerated by intramuscular injection, intranasal insufflation of powder or an aqueous solution spray. So the vocal or sub sublingual, the lozenges, um, they also have rectal suppositories and oral dosing. The mechanism by which ketamine exerts its antidepressive effect is a mystery, but it is known for the rapid Rapidity of its action compared to other antidepressants. Ketamine eliminates um, in the three to six weight for therapeutic effects. So ketamine is, is a is a race mix race mix of ra race mix mixture containing equal parts of R ketamine and S ketamine. Both stereo stereosomers contain antidepressant effects. R ketamine has fewer psycho Psychotomimetic effects and prolonged um, antidepressant act, antidepressant action and greater synaptogenesis. And S ketamine has a greater affinity for the N methyl D aspirate or NMDA receptor and a and a con commensurate increase in its anesthetic potency. The medicinal history of ketamine. So ketamine is also an act is also active at a number of other neural receptors in the brain, including opioid, dopamine, and muscarinic or nioctinetic acetylcholine. 
choline receptors, making a popular anesthetic induction agent in a variety of patient populations and settings. So, um, so for anesthetic surgeries with like the G G G sorry, geriatric population for children, um, it's also been used in uh, for cesarean sections, burn patients, proce procedural sedation in the ER and in the field for trauma victims. It's also been used for, or it's used for pain medicine, um, psychiatric conditions outside of the US, used for treatment of alcohol, um, and, and that goes to say that eventually ketamine was starting to circle around in the club scene throughout the 80s and 90s. So it also gained a reputation for the date rape drug, addiction, and dependency. Um, in anesthesiology and critical care medicine, ketamine remains invaluable due to its ability to maintain cardiorespiratory stability while providing effective sedation and anal. anal Jasia or Gizia? Sorry, guys. A growing body of literature has demonstrated the clinical value of ketamine across diverse settings with emerging roles in pain medicine and treatment resistant depression. Uh, with ketamine and psychotherapy. So there is a, um, despite robust evidence for its rapid antidepressant and anti suicidal properties. Ketamine's reputation as a psychedelic drug of abuse has led to a cautious acceptance by mainstream psychiatry. This has not stopped many physicians, including not only psychiatrists, but also anesthesiologists and emergency physicians from using ketamine off-label for treatment-resistant depression in clinical practice. Often in specialized ketamine infusion centers, the interest in its clinical use for a wide variety of psychiatric conditions has continued to expand. When viewed through the psychedelic paradigm, ketamine has more to offer than just a chemo chemotherapeutic agent. Ketamine can bring people into non-ordinary states of consciousness that have the potential to disrupt rigid and maladaptive mental structures, reorient self-narratives, loosen defense mechanisms and increase opportunities for personality, personally meaningful experience. But the use of ketamine to treat mood disorders continues to surprise clinicians as it was discovered that ketamine, in addition to an antidepressant effect, also rapidly relieves suicidal ideation. In the 90s, ketamine was used in a psychedelic psychotherapy paradigm to research and treat alcohol addiction and neuro neurosis in Russia which led to further clinical work in the US. The first awakening of interest in ketamine by academic psychiatry as opposed to anesthesiology was by those who saw ketamine because of its close structural relationship to PCP as a potential ideal chemical means to produce a model schizophrenic state. So since its discovery, ketamine has been observed to reduce to produce symptoms similar to those of schizophrenia. And as a result, researchers have used these drugs extensively as models to study schizophrenia. While it now appears to, that oh, while it now appears that overlaps in symptoms and even receptor effects are insufficient to explain the complex neuropathology of schizophrenia, ketamine has undoubtedly facilitated and stimulated research in efforts into understand this understanding schizophrenia. Um, also, recent neuroimaging studies support potential of anti-anhedonic and antidepressant effects, demonstrating its ability to alter glucose metabolism in re regions implicated in mood disorders. Repeated ketamine doses may improve depressive symptoms comparable to, and perhaps even more rapidly um, than electroconvulsive therapy. Studies found that ketamine may reduce symptom severity of PTSD more rapidly than mitolazolam. Studies that used ketamine have used it in conjunction with these modalities um, in several studies. So they've used CBT, mindfulness-based interventions, motivational enhancement therapy, existentially oriented therapy, and functional analytic psychotherapy. Several disorders treated with CAP have been major depressive disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, attention deficit hyperactive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, borderline personality disorder, substance use disorder, and obsessive compulsive disorder. 
So current research with ketamine that we've seen is that, um, so a study at Yale discovered that ketamine seemed to provide rapid relief from depression. Um, a review of 10 studies where subjects were administered ketamine indicated that a single infusion of ketamine, 54.9% um, of the participants were free of suicidal ideation after 24 hours of dose, and 60% remained free after the first week. Controlled trials between 2000 and 2015 were performed with ketamine for treatment-resistant depression. 10% uh, of participants were still in remission after 10 days, and, other, and the other percent experienced short-lived remission. So to prolong the benefits of ketamine, other protocols were developed to allow repeated dosing, so two to three times a week for several weeks. The repeated dosing yielded response rate, thus the standard of clinical care practices to use ketamine without psychotherapy. Um, administration and bioavailability. So it's sol soluble in both water and lipids, and it can be administered through multiple routes. So, um, and I talked about this a little bit already, it's the intravenous and intramuscular, oral, nasal, rectal, sub subcutaneous, and epidural. Um, the IV administration is 100% bioavailable and considered ideal route for administration in settings like emergency rooms or um, when there's like uncoo uncooperative patients. The intramuscular ketamine is commonly used and has slightly lower bioavailability of 93%. Uh, systemic effects. So um, in the cardiovascular area at both sub-anesthetic and anesthetic doses, ketamine is predominantly a symp sympathomimetic um, producing increased arterial pressures and heart rate through direct stimulation of the central nervous system structures. Um, from a pulmonary lens, we have uh, ketamine does not cause clinically significant respiratory depression in patients, though arterial hyp hypoxemia following rapid IV infusions of ketamine has been reported. And from a neurological stance, ketamine increases cerebral metabolism and it can potentially increase in intracranial pressure and has been used cautiously in patients with space occupying cerebral lesions and pain injury. Um, and these are my references. Um, so as you guys can see, I, I gave you guys more of a history along with um, the chemistry of it, um, the history of the medicine, um, brief um, intro into ketamine and psychotherapy, and then of course the current research um, and the effects that it has on the body. Um, I, I know this was a short presentation. I apologize. I've been sick for the last three days, but um, I hope that you guys um, enjoyed a little more of ketamine-assisted psychotherapy. Um, thank you.